Good evening, friends. Can you hear me? Am I audible to you? Here, yes, thank you very much, Eril. So, should we start, people? Good evening, Saira. Have you come for the first time, Saira? Okay, let's begin. And uh, this is the mandatory introduction I have to give you every class. This is to tell you that there is an existence of plus subscription on an academy. And if at all you subscribe for an academy, you'll be eligible for all the daily live classes, live quizzes, structured courses, and unlimited access to all kinds of lectures. Now, remember, this is the referral code, Dr. ASM YT. And uh, there are free live classes on an academy that is happening every single day. For those people who are targeting 2022 exams, you'll be having 9 p.m. free live classes every day. And if you're targeting 2021 exam, that is upcoming exam, then you have live free class, live free quizzes at 8 p.m. every single day. Free live test on an academy need PG if you're targeting 2021 need exam. Okay, so there is a batch going on called as Operation Need PG batch. For the 2021 batch, I am teaching microbiology test and discussion series. And uh, I'll be teaching biochemistry for 2022 batch, A to Z of biochemistry in terms of genetics we have gone into. <laughs> so this is how you can connect with me on an academy. You can actually search for my ID here on Telegram. You can actually join this particular Telegram app and this ID so that you'll be getting links for all the free classes. And this is how you can connect with me on social media on Instagram using WinEmperor. So I had given you enough data. Let's go for the first topic. See, yesterday we left with not discussing mucopolysaccharidosis. And I told you today we'll discuss transcription. And then after transcription, we'll be discussing DNA replication, uh, the repairs and DNA replication. Now, from yesterday's class, if you have any questions, you can ask me now. I'll give you a minute's time. If you have any questions, please let me know. Any questions at all for you to type also i'll give you some time let's take one minute time to discuss whatever that was not understood yesterday No questions at all. Then let's begin. Okay, so let me ask you some few questions from yesterday's class. In hyaluronic acid, both the uronic acid and the amino sugar should be what? In case of hyaluronic acid, both the amino sugar and the uronic acid should be which one? Excellent, Shreya and Satya Shri. It is glucose. What is not present in hyaluronic acid? <coughs> what is not present in hyaluronic acid? What is not present in hyaluronic acid? No, uronic acid has to be present. Satya Shri just said that uronic acid is glucuronic acid right excellent covalently bound proteins are not found in case of hyaluronic acid what about chondroitin sulfate chondroitin sulfate dermatan sulfate keratin sulfate can be commonly found in which area i told you yes chondroitin sulfate dermatan sulfate keratin sulfate all can be commonly found in the eye excellent in the cornea and chondroitin can be specifically found in the cartilages dermatan in the skin dermatan that is intradermally if you inject insulin you are an idiot so tell me what is the uronic acid of dermatan sulfate what is the what is the uronic acid of dermatan sulfate? Excellent, it is hydronic acid. 
that uronic acid can also be found in which other sugar uronic acid can also be found in which other sugar heparan sulfate don't say heparan either say heparan sulfate or say heparin okay please say either heparin or heparan sulfate in both areas will be having uronic acid that is hydronic acid it can be glucuronic acid it can be hydronic acid and in case of keratan sulfate this is spelling wrong keratan sulfate in case of keratan sulfate what do you expect in case of keratan sulfate what is the uniqueness i told you what is not present in keratan sulfate the uronic acid is not present so what is the sugar what is the sugar which is not uronic acid here galactose excellent chavi gupta very well so we will we revise what we are supposed to learn now let me tell you about the short gesture about the mucopolysaccharidosis please remember one thing you can expect mucopolysaccharidosis to be acquired in which kind of metabolic disorder see generally when you have good evening kusmanjali very good evening thank you very much for joining us i in fmg aspirin kusmanjali look at this mps we are learning as a part of congenital anomaly or it can be referred to as inherited disorder this can be a part of inborn errors of metabolism right mucopolysaccharidosis which other metabolic disorder of your body or hormonal disorder of your body will suffer from mps anybody in which other metabolic or hormonal disorder will you actually have acquired mps excellent satyashri in case of hypothyroidism what happens in hypothyroidism the t3 and t4 levels can be slightly lesser or massively lesser remember t3 and t4 can propel metabolism metabolism means both anabolism and catabolism but because t3 and t4 are deficient catabolism is starting to break down when catabolism is actually blocked then mps is not broken down when mps is not broken down mucopolysaccharides can start accumulating and if that patient becomes unconscious what is the condition called as because of immense amount of hypothyroidism the patient's mucopolysaccharides breakdown has actually been blocked and he goes into unconscious state what is that state called as this is how you learn about the clinical understanding of your theory part excellent arga saha it's called as mix edema please remember mix edema means mixomatous accumulation of mucopolysaccharides or any kind of mucoid material without being broken down are you okay with this okay let's look at this particular topic here now what are the most important what are the most important types of mucopolysaccharidosis mocchio hurler san filippo hunter what is the beauty of a hunter versus hurler remember hurler and hunter will have clinical features paralleling each other both of them will have clinical features running parallel to each other but you tell me hunter requires very good vision yes or no hunter requires good vision yes or no if i want to hunt i require good vision so whenever you have mucopolysaccharides excess they can easily come and bind to the cornea to cause corneal clouding because of which vision can fall but except in case of hunter's disease in hunter's disease there is no corneal clouding no corneal clouding you have clear cornea this is point number 1 whenever they say in a mucopolysaccharidosis case there is no corneal clouding the most important disease you have to think about would be hunter and what else is important about hunter among all the other disorders who are autosomally recessive hunter is the only one which is excellent recessive or you follow this part when i say hunter is excellent recessive generally when i use the word hunter which gender is acting as a hunter male or a female which gender acts as a hunter male or a female you think of male so now listen very carefully hunter's disease can attack your whole body except your eye at the same time males are the ones who are affected while the females will become carriers females will become carriers if you do not know or if you can't remember what kind of inheritance is this think about it hunters are generally males males are mostly affected males affected means it has to be excellent recessive it can't be autosomally recessive are you following this part did you understand the two points here i have told you about two important concepts very faster so tell me if there is anything that is bothering you right now can i move forward can i move forward yes now look at the dwarfism part whenever we speak about dwarfism you think about proportionate dwarfism proportionate dwarfism means what the stunted growth can be equally distributed to all the parts of your body for example 
if at all a person is supposed to have this size head and leg suddenly the head is supposed to be of normal size but the neck and thing are the same they have actually shrunk it means this is called as disproportionate dwarfism that disproportionate dwarfism can be seen in case of cretinism at times now look at this in case of mucopolysaccharidosis whenever we think about a dwarfism structural retardation it will be uniformly attacking all the parts of your body and the accumulation of mucopolysaccharides in your skin will give you coarse facies for those people who have never heard this before mark my words whenever they're going to give you a very long history and you think that there is some kind of defect in the tell me mucopolysaccharidosis means defect in catabolism or anabolism catabolism so whenever we think about mps and they are giving you a history that has it sir if the history is suggestive of catabolism being weaker then you will think of the mps accumulating in different parts of my body so remember coarse facies is not meant for any specific mps coarse facies is common for all the mps steps whenever i use the word mps you can actually take into consideration coarse facies also remember mental retardation can be commonly found but physical retardation is more common than mental retardation here i want you to understand mentally soluted person or mentally stable person is morcio is morcio mentally stable is morcio don't take it as mentally retarded as morcio m for m mind wise he is stable is morcio so in case of monkeo's disease you don't have mental retardation in all the other mucopolysaccharidosis you'll be having mental retardation now let's look at the simple names here these all you have to know them because you have to know the pathway only when you know the pathway where the catabolism happens and stops you'll be able to name them so remember in monkeo you have keratan sulfate in the urine in hurler you have dermatan sulfate in the urine in san filippo you have heparan sulfate in the urine and in hunter it can be dermatan sulfate or heparan sulfate so you tell me what is common to dermatan and heparan whatever that we learned from yesterday let us try to assimilate the information now tell me what can be commonly found in heparan and dermatan hydronic acid now look at the deficiency here sulfo hydronate sulfatase is deficient so you will be able to go backwards in finding out which enzyme is deficient are you able to understand what i'm trying to do here are you able to understand what i'm trying to do here i'm giving you the clinical picture and i'm telling you the investigations and the results of investigations then when we go back we'll be able to identify what might have gone wrong are you following this part is this okay for you if i do it is this okay for you because if i keep on saying in this disorder this enzyme is deficient in this disorder this is deficient it will be very difficult for you now look at this we are speaking about hunter right in hunter look for the concept here death happens in second decade of life so hunter is generally an adult or a child hunter is generally adult or a child you can have children and hunters also but mostly they are adults so if they are adults they can't die between 1 to 10 years of age they may die after 15 years but before 25 years of age so death can happen the second or third decade of life so hunter has a very longer life span hunter has very proper vision because of no corneal clouding hunter is x linked that is why males are most commonly affected and hunter when he goes to hunt he actually lies down in the forest for taking a break when he is lying down in the forest he does not have odomos or any kind of insect repelling cream because of which he'll have a lot of itchy sensation the more he scratches which part of your body can be damaged the more he scratches himself which part of your body is damaged skin so dermatan sulfate followed by heparan sulfate and that hunter can be made a fool if at all he is sleeping while the hunter is lying down in the forest while the hunter is lying down in the forest suddenly there is itchy sensation when a small rabbit is running he is not able to focus on the rabbit because he is focused on his itching sensation more commonly at that point of time making his body itchy the rabbit escaped because of which the hunter feels like an idiot so he feels like an idiot hydronate sulfatase deficiency i have given you one story for hunter did you understand the story here see i'm just trying because theory wise you have to know the full pathway and you have to know where exactly it is blocking are you able to follow what i'm saying i hope you're following okay now look at san filippo now look at this part in san filippo disease you have heparan sulfate in the urine 
heparin sulfate in the urine can be because of multiple enzyme deficiencies because to generate heparin you will require multiple pathways to come into equation but think about hurla <coughs> hurla will be running parallel to whom i told you hurla runs parallel to whom i told you just 10 minutes back i told you hurla runs parallel to hunter so in case of hunter sulfo hydronate sulfatase is deficient well, in case of Hurler, alpha L hydronase is deficient. In both the conditions, hydronic acid breaking enzyme, that is, if I have id uronic acid plus acetylated amino sugar is present as a repeat linkage, that is, hydronic acid plus acetylated amino sugar, hydronic acid, acetylated amino sugar, hydronic acid, acetylated amino sugar, in that this bond will be broken, hydronic acid will be liberated. So that is why you will be having hydronic acid containing compounds coming out in the urine. So let's go for the next topic here. This is the table of column. Let me tell you the names here. MPS 1H 1S. 1H is hurler, 1S is key. Hurler, ski. The nomenclature is very beautiful. When they saw hurler was offering a lot of information, that is the scientist who worked on it was hurler. When hurler started presenting a lot of paper, they thought MPH, MPS 1 is the only type of MPS 1. But then Ski came up. He came up and gave me similar kind of features, but with myelin modifications. So you had to name it as MPS1 with information from Ski. Then they named the previous one as MPS1 with information from Hurler. That is why it became MPS1H. This became MPS1S. Now there is a condition which can have combination of both Hurler and Ski's feature that is referred to as MPS1H bar S. Did you understand this part, people? Hello? Did you understand this logic here? So we have MPS 1H, which came first. Ski also gave the paper about it. And then you had different things. But there are certain people who can have a combination of both. That is why you have a different name called as MPH 1H bar S. Ultimately, alpha L hydronidase is deficient because of its heparin sulfate and dermatan sulfate can be seen in the urine. Remember, whenever hydronic acid containing area has been affected, you will be having affection in which kind of mucopolysaccharides people? Come on, tell me. When hydronic acid breakdown is suffering, which kind of MPS will be happily suffering from the metabolic processes? When I say hydronic acid, excellent. So heparin sulfate and dermatan sulfate can be involved. The same thing is applicable for Hunter also. I told you, right, Hurler and Hunter are similar to each other. That is why heparin sulfate and dermatan sulfate can be seen in from top 1 to 2. So do not have any difficulties at all from 1H, 1S, 1H bar S or two you take any of them in all of them heparin sulfate and dermatan sulfate can be accumulating but when you go for san filippo san filippo has four types a b c d and how do i name san filippo the san filippo came after hunter so san filippo has three the three will be again named as a b c d just like san filippo a b c d in that you don't have to worry about each and every single enzyme just focus on the first one called as sal filippo a in that sulfamidase or sulfohydronidase can be affected because of which heparin sulfate can come out of the urine. Now, the, what are the things? Morchio. Tell me, what did I tell you about Morchio? M for what I told you. When I spoke about Morchio, mentally what? He's mentally stable. So mental radiation is not there. Also remember, N-acetyl galactosamine 6 sulfatase is deficient. N-acetyl galactosamine 6 sulfatase enzyme is deficient because of which desulfation does not happen. Keratan sulfate is the one where sulfates can be present, but uronic acid is not present. That is why uronidase will not be an enzyme here. And morchiolamide is also a condition where mental radiation may not be very commonly formed. So when they speak about mental radiation, the two diseases which will not be containing MR would be one being morchio, the other one may be mar maratiolamide. Maratio, don't say maratioxlamide, it is maratiolamide. In case of sly disease, you have beta glucuronidase, HS and DS. You don't have to worry about sly and Natovitz. Nobody will ask you questions from there. But the most common questions raised, whenever they speak about MPS, the number one disease will be Hurler, followed by Hunter. But Hunter, you have very much amount of information. Next, you go to Ski. After that, you come to San Filippo. That's all. Morchio, maratiolamide, sly and Natovitz, they'll not ask you questions. If you have any doubts at this point of time, please let me know now. If you're all okay with that, please put a Y. I'll go to the next topic called as DNA repair mechanism. Excellent. Let's just let me tell you this. 
say hurler, hurler ski or ski. Now you have something called as type 5. Type 5 has a different disease called as ski syndrome. The first one is ski disease. This one is ski syndrome. This was initially called as type 5, but then it became a part of type 1. I repeat, type 5 was initially named as ski. Now you don't have type 5 at all. If you watch very carefully, you had 4 here, then you jump to 6. Did you notice this part? You had 4A, then you jump to 6. There is nothing called as type 5. Why? Because type 5 has jumped to type 1 automatically. So ski has become a part of type 1, yes. So Sly, Motilame are all the ones that are be following it. Okay. Now these are the common features of mucopolysaccharidosis. In case you would want to know, facial features have flat nasal bridge. Can anybody tell me why the nose bridge is flat? Can anybody tell me why the nose bridge is flat? If I draw from the side, this is how I'll be drawing, right? This is called as bridge of the nose. This is the forehead. This is the cavity for the eye. This is the bridge of the nose. Why the cartilage has become weaker? Because mucopolysaccharide turnover is a failure. Turnover is a failure. You will not be able to break down already existing chondroitin sulfate, already existing cartilaginous substances because of which the older ones are existing, the newer ones are not able to replace. Whenever something is going undergoing wear and tear, it means they are becoming weaker. But you do not have enough amount of mechanism to replace them. That is why you are maintaining with a lower activity. Now, can you tell me in what other places the bridge of the nose can be destroyed? Name two other diseases where the bridge of the nose is destroyed. Anybody? One is lepromatous leprosy. Excellent, Fatima. Lepromatous leprosy. The other one can be congenital syphilis. Congenital syphilis, not just syphilis, congenital syphilis. Lepromatous leprosy and congenital syphilis are the two other conditions where the bridge of the nose can be destroyed. So you can see flat nasal bridge, thick lips. Even the lip area, mucopolysaccharides accumulate. And when will you have short torso? Please understand the epifacial plates will keep on extending up to what age generally? Not TB Kruger. Epifacial plate, maximum lengthening of the particular bone and the fusion will actually happen till what age? 18. But in those children, when they are 18 months old, they'll be having mucopolysaccharides lining this area of the epifacial plates because of which the plates will not be able to expand anymore. So they'll always be short in nature. We can have developmental delays. We can have mental radiation. And if at all the mucopolysaccharides accumulate in the heart, then the patient can go for cardiac failure. In the liver, you can have just hard liver. You call a condition called as hard liver. The liver is filled up with mucopolysaccharides. When I try to percuss it, generally it will be dull. This will be extra dull. Also in the lung, whenever the mucopolysaccharides accumulate between the alveoli, the expansion of alveoli, the inflation and the deflation of the alveoli will not happen. That is where respiratory issues can happen. So let's stop here now. Now, shall we do DNA repair mechanism? There are four mechanisms. Base excision repair, neutral excision repair, non-homologous recombination, homologous arrangement. There are four things. If you're really interested, I'll let you know. Otherwise, we'll go to transcription. How many of you want this? Because there was only one person asked me yesterday. If you're all very confident with all these kind of pictures, these are the different pictures you have to know if you want to understand neutral excision repair properly. But if you think that you're already good about it, we'll go to transcription directly. But please mark my words. I have kept this as a two-hour session to discuss All these are to be discussed, but if you are not interested, well, go to transcription directly. See, once I start, no, no, I'm saying once I start, it will take time. I don't want you to feel bored once I started because it's a very complex thing. We may look, it may look very simple, like base has been excised, nuclear has been excised, homologous end has been completed, and non homologous genes have been joined. That will be easy to finish it off. But if at all I show you the picture, it will take time. Will you be having enough time? Will you be patient enough to understand all these things? OK, then. So because you're saying this, I'm going. Please don't blame me later. OK, let us understand about DNA repair. When will you require a repair when something is abnormal? See, repair can have two meanings. One is you might actually create a new problem there you use the word you have repaired it but most commonly when something is wrong you correct it you can call it as repair when will the repair need 
then will the repair be needed when you have something troubling you what can be the trouble see there can be exogenous damage there can be endogenous damage to metabolism which can cause damage to a cell because of which nuclear dna can have errors mitochondrial dna can have errors when the errors are not repaired they lead to pathology that pathology can be cancer old age or apoptosis when will you call it as a disease process when the rate of dna damage is more than the rate of repair that is every single day remember you will be having 5 lakh such kind of errors happening in your dna every single day 5 lakh errors will be happening on your dna and all the 5 lakhs will be corrected and repaired not exactly 5 lakhs at least 4 lakhs 90000 errors can be removed the remaining 10000 can be easily washed away but if the 4 lakh 90000 repair is not happening then because of failure of repair or if the repair is slower than the damage then you will have disease now how are we going for the repair first look at the general picture here are you able to see the picture here if you can't read every single line it's okay can you just see the picture here okay look at this what are the most important words you have to know you will come across the word ssb what is that single strand break means ssb what is hrr does anybody know what is hrr in dna repair find out what is hrr i'll explain you now now look at this single strand break let me zoom into the picture here see this class is purely picture based class whatever i'm going to teach you is just picture based explanation it's not about theory are you okay with that pictures explanation pictures explanation i'll be showing only pictures and explanation will you be okay with that okay now look at this yes look at this a single strand break what do you mean by single strand break that is when two strands are coming together they have already formed a bond watch it this end is a nucleotide there is a new yes this end is a no no professor not correct so this is a nitrogenous base this is a nitrogenous base but between the two nitrogenous bases you have two strands coming up okay homologous recombination repair very good now in this area if you notice the nucleotides coming from this particular strand is defective so you have to understand what might have gone wrong so first thing is a break has happened second thing is detection of the break now if you want to detect the break what do you need you need a protein called as poly adp ribosylating protein i repeat poly adp ribosylating protein one are you following this part poly adp ribosylating protein one if you do not understand what is poly adiposylating listen very carefully then i have atp becoming adp and pi where glucose is trying to become glucose 6 phosphate what is the reaction set to be called for that is happening for glucose glucose has become glucose 6 phosphate so glucose has become what come on people make it faster i'm trying to use parallel analogy so that you will not be finding it difficult for the current situation tell me if glucose becomes glucose 6 phosphate what is the reaction happening to glucose phosphorylated but instead of this adp that is in the instead of the pi which went to glucose because pi went to glucose it is called as phosphorylation no no it is not substrate level phosphorylation it is not at all that it is just phosphorylation substrate level phosphorylation is the word you use only when there is atp synthesized or gtp synthesized here i'm utilizing atp so you can't call it that way so it is called as phosphorylation now look at this if i say glucose is present here it turns into adp glucose what hap what has happened now see the same cofactor is here atp breaks into adp and pi either glucose can become glucose 6 phosphate or glucose has become adp glucose it means if i throw phosphate onto glucose it's called as phosphorylation if i throw adp to glucose that is called as adp ribosylation it means a whole adp molecule has been made to attach with glucose you're like huh how can that happen does that even happen yes it happens think about galactose metabolism have you heard of the name of the enzyme called as galactose one phosphate uridyl transferase yes or no there you utilized udp glucose that was just like adp glucose are you following this part when i attach adp to glucose it's called as adp glucose when i attach udp to the glucose it's called as udp glucose so udp glucose plus galactose one phosphate has to give me udp galactose 
plus glucose 1 phosphate just exchange of activity are you following what i'm saying so on that basis look at this if i attach adp to x the x is said to be adp ribosylated now there are certain students who ask me why can't you say adp related why are you saying adp ribosylated because what is adp you have adenine the nitrogenous base to which i add ribose sugar to which i have a phosphate this is called as nucleotide now in this area when i attach x the whole molecule is not attaching to x in the whole molecule only ribose is attaching to the x because of which adenine and phosphate are together here so because ribose is making the contact i call it as adp ribosylation did you understand this part yes okay now come back to the topic here in this particular protein see i'm explaining thread bare if you think the explanation is actually very long please let me know because sometimes when i read what is there see i'll tell you one thing when you go to the college classes in the college class it will be time bound classes in one hour they finish they have to finish the topic at that point of time they'll run the slides they'll say this is what is happening this is what is happening this is what is happening so when things are happening very fast here you'll keep on writing down notes if you don't understand something you'll tell yourself you'll understand it later and then you'll never learn learn it or you will try to go behind the teachers to ask what exactly is the meaning i do not want you to suffer like that that is why i am going thread bare about every single word and what it means it would have been easy for me to say parp will be attached after parp is attached some proteins are attached parp and proteins both are going away repair is done if that happens the class will just leave like any other class you will not actually become a better person than what you are that is why i am taking these efforts are you okay if i teach you this way i just want to know because there is another group of people there'll always be other group of people they'll say of course i understand all these things why are you actually irritating me that is the kind of activity you can be having i do not want to disappoint those people okay you won't reply also mm -hmm. okay now look at this so whenever there is a break you will bring a protein called as parp when the parp comes and sits here i'll be able to use nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide watch very carefully the beauty of the whole subject called as molecular biology what is nad nicotinamide is here i have adenine here i have a ribose here i have one more ribose here i have a phosphate here mark my words very carefully what is the structure of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide you have nicotinic acid that is making a bond with the amine to form amide bond it becomes nicotinamide the nicotinamide ring is bound to adenine that is bound to a ribose with a phosphate that phosphate makes a bond with the phosphate that makes a bond with the ribose let me write it here nicotinamide adenine phosphate ribose ribose phosphate that is why i call it as nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide the point is two phosphates and riboses have been used now whenever nad goes inside and comes out as watch my words when nad goes inside and comes out as nicotinamide what has been lost come on people tell me when nad goes inside nicotinamide is coming out what is lost adenine dinucleotide part is lost that adenine dinucleotide is what adp that adp will be offered to this area do you get my point here adp is offered to this area that is a function of poly adp ribosylation of part 1 so dna repair proteins are recruited when this protein is here this protein will start pulling many kinds of proteins those proteins are called as dna repair proteins when that happens i'll be able to remove the part when the part goes away the part will take up all the repaired areas creating a complete universal entry here look at this area you have this zone and this zone i repeat let me zoom into the picture here let me erase again we have this zone and this for you yes this area is empty but this zone and this zone also should be removed and for that removal can you notice something here park came as a single circle but on the surface of park you will be able to see these kind of structures do you notice these are the excess useless nucleotides which are not required so when they go away removal of park lesion happens then the dna repair proteins will bring show sure the dna polymerase is coming to the equation and the nucleotides are added so that the single strand break has been successfully repaired are you following this part simple logic did you understand till now yes now look at this part here 
what happens here? Again, there is a single strand biasing protein. Now, if at all there is some kind of compound which blocks PARP, what happens? When you don't want the repair to happen, PARP will be inhibited by some kind of compound. When the PARP is inhibited, then the trapped PARP and cytotoxic DNA complexes will together form. So generally, what is supposed to commence it? PARP is supposed to commence it. But PARP is bound to a compound called as X. They do not know what exactly the compounds are. They have not been isolated till now. But when the PARP is making a complex, this complex can be toxic to the DNA complex. When they sit, the DNA will be destroyed. As the DNA is destroyed, the cell is also dying. Now look at this part here. What else can happen when the PARP is binding with the complex? The PARP and the binding complex, when they bind, they'll come and sit on the replication fork. The replication fork is said to be stalled. What do you mean by stalled? What do you mean by stalled? Stalled means it has been stopped. So when the stopping happens, then it will have to be single proteins only. There'll be double standard proteins together. At that point of time, you can bring in homologous recombination repair. If there is a homologous recombination repair, the DNA repair is successful. If that repair is deficient, then error prone DNA repair happens because of its cell death happens. Why am I showing the picture? This picture is common to tell you whenever there is an error, the error can be repaired by your body itself. Your body is the best way to heal itself. Whenever you're suffering from any kind of deficiency, then only you'll require outside equipment. But for example, you fall from the road. You fall from the bike on the road. When there is an injury, you do not need extraordinary repair mechanisms. You just allow it calmly without water filling to the area. It can repair itself. Only when the repair mechanism fails, you will be having death or diseases. So remember, whenever DNA repair mechanisms are failing, they are leading to diseases. Let's go for the first repair mechanism. Look at this part here. Now there is something called as DNA mismatch. Mismatch of bases. You know, wherever there is A, there should be T. Wherever there is G, there should be C. Now in this area, can you tell me what is wrong? Which zone is wrong? I'm not going to round it off. Just tell me what went wrong here. G is bound to T. Now watch very carefully. When the G is bound to T, G is confused. Oh, what exactly happened? If it was A, it can bind to T with double bond. If it was G and it is C and C, it can bind to triple bond. But when G and T came together, they are neither able to show double bond nor able to show triple bond. Now, what is the only bond you have? You have a single bond. Now, this single bond is a very weak bond. That is how you are coming to know something is wrong. So in this area, the smoothness of the double standard DNA will not exist. Watch very carefully. The beauty is when you draw the two lines parallel to each other, the distance has been maintained exactly here, exactly here, exactly here. But the moment you come to this area, can you see a small bump? Yes or no? Hello? Yes. Now, this bump is the one that is annoying the DNA polymerase mechanism. Why? Because you know one thing, DNA polymerase enzymes are not only important for adding nucleotides, they also have one function called as exonuclease activity. Now, can you tell me what two exonuclease activities do you see? What are the two types of exonuclease activities you know in case of DNA polymerase? The nomenclature is based on 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease and 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease. Yes or no? You know that there are two exonuclease activities for polymerases. Polymerases can exhibit two types of exonuclease activity. One is 5 prime to 3 prime, the other is 3 prime to 5 prime. Now, in that, the reading, proof reading can be done by 3 prime to 5 prime. Why? I have told you this many times before. For example, if I write 9543217843, number is told to you on the phone, you'll ask him to repeat again. So I'll tell you, see whether I'm right. 9453217843. He'll say yes, but still you'll be confused because if you're going to transfer, say for example, you're going to transfer one crore rupee. It is a very huge amount. If you make a mistake, it goes to some other bank account. So what will you do? Sir, I'll read the number from behind. Tell me whether the numbers are correct. So you'll say 23987123549. Then when he says okay, then you're absolutely confident. Yes or no? Because when you read forward, your brain is cluttered with some information. The brain is cluttered with some information. But when you go backwards, the clutter is removed. You will not be able to overlook the errors. Are you following this part? Hello? When you write your test also in the exam hall, when you write the test, the first time you write the test, you will not know what went wrong. So in the last five minutes when you read it, instantly you will notice one or two mistakes in your life. 
but when you give the same thing to your friend when your friend is extremely sharp as you when he reads he'll be able to find more mistakes than you yes or no because your eye will not be able to notice the mistakes that you have actually overseen it so at this point of time going in the reverse direction can help you find more mistakes than going in the forward direction that is what is happening here with the help of 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity because of which you are able to detect what went wrong now watch very clear. am i boring here now please be honest i am trying to give you analogy that's all did you understand this so your dna which is supposed to run forward is taking a step and then trying to go backwards to see oh my god something is wrong okay let's look at this here in this gap the new dna strand is cut and the mispaired nucleotide neighbors are removed watch my most important word not only this you will remove a whole bunch area from this if for example a small grass is actually defective or dangerous or poisonous you don't pluck that grass alone you dig into the whole soil along with the particular grass the remaining grass area on the soil also is removed likewise a whole cavity is created this is called as mispaired nucleotide in the neighbors being removed now what happens the replacement dna has been brought now the replacement dna can be brought in two different ways think about the logic here the replacement dna can be brought in two different ways either i keep on adding a nucleotide based on the dna polymerase activity one by one by one by one or outside i'll be able to know what nucleotides are present in the 3 prime to 5 prime strand for example this is a t t t c g i'll think about it outside i create a complementary strand of that and i bring a patch and i fill the area or you follow this part there are two mechanisms of filling it either i fill it one by one by one by one or outside i wait properly read it and then create a dna polymerase and the whole patch will come and lie or you follow this part did you understand this yes when a flap has been added when a flap or patch has been added you call it as flap polymerase likewise when i want to remove a flap when i want to remove a flap then i can have flap endonuclease these are the two enzymes which will not be written very deeply in your textbooks but people will expect you to know this or you follow this part when i want to add a bunch of all things as a single patch i call it a flap patch polymerase or when i want to remove the whole flap i call it as flap endonuclease did you understand this no shreya flipase and floppase are different flipase and floppase will have their role in the cell membrane if it flips inside the content goes inside if it flips outside the content goes outside there are both the cell membrane transporters i am speaking about flap polymerases flap a is nothing exists you have flap endonuclease is what we are discussing about a dna ligase will seal the gap with the dna backbone done now let's look at this part now we are going for the homologous recombination and non homologous end joining repair do you have any questions till now are you all with me as we are going forward see I'll give you one simple logic. If you are going to be with me for the next ten minutes, when we are done with the DNA repair, and from there we slightly shift into transcription, then transcription can become dead easy for you. You don't have to read threadbare in your exams for your college classes. See, in your college classes, you are done DNA transcription very surely. But I generally would want to continue in a particular flow. I have gotten the flow because we have come to the end of DNA replication. Now, once we get finished with this, we can transfer ourselves to transcription, and then we can end up with co-transcriptional and post-transcriptional modification. With that, your understanding of the molecular biology will become even better. That is only my goal. If you will be staying with me, I'll do it continuously. Okay, sir, is the flap endonuclease thanks removing the neighboring portion? Yes, flap endonuclease is supposed to remove the whole neighboring area along with the affected area. That is the function of flap endonuclease. Why is it called as endonuclease, people? Anybody? I said flap endonuclease. I didn't say flap exonuclease. Yes, it cuts in the middle. For example, this is the double strand. The flap endonuclease will not cut here and here. It cuts here. A chunk of DNA is removed from the core area. Okay. Now we are going for homologous recombination versus non-homologous end joining repair. Let's focus on the homologous recombination first. Now, first we want to understand what is the meaning of the word homologous. What is the meaning of the word homologous? Why is it homologous, and why other thing is not homologous? Many times students will ask me, sir, here I am seeing there are two DNA strands. It has to be non-homologous. No, why is it called as homologous? It's easy. Here, this is a double-stranded DNA. 
this is a double stranded dna you're looking at two double standard dnas did you understand this first place did you observe this first place this observation is failed by many students many students fail in observing these things when they're trying to compare that with non-homologous enjoining repair in non-homologous enjoining repair our complete focus is only on one double stranded dna everything is happening in the same double standard dna whatever happens till the end it is happening with only the single double standard dna but in case of homologous our focus is on two double standard dna's are you following this part so you tell me in the two double standard dna's are both involved or only one double standard is involved from the picture the problem is with one or both this is what i have the question about tell me when i have shown this picture you're looking at the picture right now in front of my eyes tell me the error is where excellent professor and mubashir and sudiksha roshan yes the problem is only with one double standard dna it means there is one more double standard dna who is exactly the complement this is exactly the xerox copy of the other one are you following this part say for example as 5 prime to 3 prime then this becomes 3 prime to 5 prime then this is again 5 prime to 3 prime again this is 3 prime to 5 prime are you following this see we'll rewrite once again i'll use a different color this is 5 prime this is 3 prime this is 3 prime this is 5 prime these two are complementary to each other now i'm looking at a separate kind of double standard dna if this is 5 prime to 3 prime this is also 3 prime to 5 prime now watch very carefully this has been xerox copied here this double strand and this double strands are xerox copies in that xerox copy one of them is having a trouble in one area now what do you need you need some protein called as rad 52 rad 50 mre1 and nbs1 i'm telling you you don't have to remember all these names but at least remember rad 52 if you say this in your viva voice the teachers will be really happy or they'll be extremely annoyed depending upon how the teacher will take it but remember in case of homologous homologous repair mechanism which requires recombination look at this part the most important keyword is recombination in homologous recombination the most important word is rad 52 now watch very carefully the rad 52 will come and bind in such a way it can remove some portions from the normal area and some portions on the normal area watch it here sorry let me draw it for you now i'm focusing on the affected area i am focusing only on the affected area now imagine this area is affected now when it is affected is it attacking only one strand tell me people when it is affected is it affecting only one strand no both strands are involved excellent so if i try to draw a diagram this diagram will not be correct for your theory answer papers many times students will make an answer mistake in this area even the viva was they'll say oh this is how i draw no this is wrong this will be treated by base excision repair this can be done by nuclear excision repair they will not need homologous recombination so you will be requiring both the strands to be affected so now what do i do when both the strands are affected like this i eat away some portion here i eat away some portion here do you understand this i eat away some portions here i eat away some portions here so what am i left with i am left with this and this here it will be like this here it will be like this do you understand previously it used to be straightforward now let me use a okay wait another slide okay now here i'll try to erase sorry i'll try to erase this zone from strand one i'll erase this zone from strand two now how will it look like the whole picture will look like this do you understand this this area this area has been cut short now this is how the picture is looking in this particular area that is the function of rad proteins now the rad proteins 
have destroyed this portion of the other strand and this portion of the front strand because of which you are able to have some enough amount of space. Now what will happen? Now I'm going to bring another protein called as BRCA2 protein. Already RAD51, RAD52 are there. Now I bring in RPA and BRCA2. What will happen when that happens? Now this particular strand will actually invade into the double strand of the next double strand area. I repeat, this particular track will invade into the proper kind of DNA, which is already double stranded. Now, as the invasion happens, let me erase the annotations here. When that happens, this particular yellow zone is going deeper. Now, this yellow zone is not able to make contact with the nucleotides here, because if you watch very carefully, here the nucleotides are facing upwards. Here also nucleotides are facing upwards. So they can't actually come in with each other. Do you understand this part? See this minor visualization. Have you observed all these things in your college? You can be honest with me. Have you observed all these things when you read for your exams? So watch very carefully. Look at this part here. Here. Yes. Now look at this. Here, when I cut it off, if you watch very carefully, these bases are free bases. They are waiting to bind with the opposite bases. They are facing upwards. Now, if you come down slowly, they divided and the invariant of the local area. Now, they are also facing upwards. They are also facing upwards. You get my point? This is called as homologous. Why? Because this strand is not the complementary of this strand. This strand is the same as the other strand. Are you following this point? That is why it is called as homologous. Because whenever you look at your textbook and you'll think homologous are, why? Why? How can it be homologous? There are two strands coming together. It has to be heterologous. No. There are two strands. There is two DNA coming here. There are two double standard DNA coming together in that this strand is the same as this strand. And this strand's complementary is this strand. This strand's complementary is this strand. This strand's exact copy is this strand. That is what is called as homologous recombination. So why is this combination happening? I will now introduce polymerase enzyme called as delta. The delta polymerase is extra intelligent. What will it do? It will try to make sure the train is fitting up. What exactly the train is up to? Look at this. When this train came inside, you saw this particular strand is having nucleotides facing upwards, right? At the same time, you'll realize there was a gap increasing between these two strands. In these two strands, there was a gap. So when this invades inside, this top, that is upward facing nucleotides will be blocked by the downward facing nucleotides of this particular DNA strand. Do you get my point? If you didn't understand, please let me know. I'm not telling you theory. I'm just explaining you using pictures. See, the best way of explaining is to show animations. But the technology is not so is not so developed to become animated here. That is why I'm doing my best to show you pictures. So please understand, when this particular DNA strand was invading into the double strand, this part is facing upwards. It will bind with something who's facing downwards. That facing downwards is the property of this DNA strand. So it can actually extend in this direction. At the same time, you will notice the other strand is actually waiting for the one minute, one minute. Now this other strand is waiting to come out. Now what happens when this area chunk has been removed, I'll be left with two double strands, two double standard DNA because this area has been done by that. Now they'll be able to remove from each other. Now the other area will go towards each other. So there will be involvement of bond breakage between the nucleic acid base pairs. Tell me if you have any questions right now. Polymerase delta will be able to seal the deal in such a way it takes it this way. The problem areas of both the strands are removed and replaced. Isn't that of the order? Yes. Okay. Last step. Look at this. This is what I'm saying. When the new DNA, that is the defective DNA is entering inside. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. When the new DNA is trying to enter inside, you are creating a complementary strand. What exactly is happening here? The DNA polymerase delta, the delta will keep adding nucleotides in such a way. This will keep extending. As it keeps extending, this area is becoming doubling. Are you noticing this part? Are you okay till now here, people? Yes. Now, this will go and continue to extend upwards. Once the extension happens like this, I will be able to retwist it. When the retwisting happens, you will be able to get this coming back and this coming back to its original position. Are you following this? No? 
Did you understand? Yes or no? Strand, 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 strand. This strand is piercing through this strand and getting involved in it because of which you are able to get a double strand here. Now, once everything is filled in place, what exactly you wanted? You did not want an empty space. Yes or no? That empty space should be filled by the appropriate nucleotide. Strand twist is not clear. See, when this particular area was present, you will be able to bring it back to normal position. Just imagine this. In this area, see, in the rubber band, there are two rubber bands here. There is a rubber band here, straight. There is a rubber band here, straight. Now, there is a rubber band which is twisted like this. Now, the moment I give it enough amount of space, the rubber band will go back to its original structure so that you will be having two double strands which are equal. Here, the twist will happen in such a way that bottom one will go back to the top, the top one will come to the bottom. Did you get this? Here, the this one will go to this area, this one will come back to the area, this twist will disappear. You got it? Please let me know if you understood or not. Yes. Why is it called as homologous? Nobody from outside came. Nobody from outside came. That's just what whoever was there was actually taken from the sister only. For this strand, who was the sister? See, I say I name it as one strand, two strand, three strand, four strand. The two strand took the help of whom? Two strand took the help of whom? Hemant, you are misunderstanding Gayatri and Hemant. See, the second strand became third strand, but it took the help of whom? It took the help of fourth strand, yes or no? The second strand invaded, and now here it has become the third strand, but it was closely bound to the fourth strand, and it took the complementary piece of second strand. So the second strand is taking the complementary piece of third strand, but it is actually adjunct to the fourth strand. Okay, second strand is similar to which strand? Okay, okay, I understand your confusion. Some of you said three, absolutely fine. Do not worry about your answer. Just I'll reframe the question once again. This is strand one, this is strand two, this is strand three, this is strand four. Now second strand took the complementary sequences of which strand? Third strand, excellent. Now the second strand is exactly the same as which strand? Who is the copy of the second strand? Fourth strand. That is why it is called as homologous recombination. Now let's go for heterologous end joining. Heterologous end joining. Look at this part. Here there is a defect. The defect is filling up the space here, filling up a space here. Are you following this part? This is a single DS DNA. Double standard DNA, only one single standard DNA. Now the most important proteins here are Q70 and Q80 along with that of DNA dependent protein kinases CS. Okay. So can you tell me what were the proteins we saw in the previous section? It will be slightly difficult for you to follow, but let me know. What were the proteins we saw in the previous section? Excellent. Rad 52. And what came into the equation to have a double standard DNA activity? Yes. In this area, the removal was done by whom? Excellent. BRCA2. So the most important proteins are Rad5152 and BRCA2. Here, it will not be RAD at all. It will be Q70, Q80 and DNA protein kinases CS. Why protein kinases? Whenever you have a space, if at all the two nucleotides are not joined together, what bond will be expected here? When there is a gap between two nucleotides, I had showed in the previous section here, when I bring in a ligase, for example, if this is a nucleotide, this is a nucleotide, but all the nucleotides are together. But this is a different flap of nucleotides. This is a different flap of nucleotides, but both of them are nucleotides. When there's a small gap here, I have to bring a phosphodiester bond. So what enzymes are required for phosphodiester bond? Hello? What enzymes are required for phosphodiester bonds or phosphorylations? Yes, ligase is required. Ligase is required. Apart from that, you require kinases who can offer the phosphate into the local area. Ligases will take the phosphates and giving it into the area. So this is what we are going to focus on. Watch it. Let me zoom even further. So first what happened? You had empty spaces here. You had empty spaces here. Once you found the empty spaces like this, you eat up this space and this space. Have you seen such an activity before? Yes or no? Eating some portion here and some portion here. You have seen this somewhere. Yes or no? Yes. Where did we see it? We saw it here. 
did notice that was the function of rad 52 50 mre1 and nbs okay so once you have done it you don't need rad here but still you'll be able to eat something here now you're bringing q70 q80 and dna when that happens you're bringing in nbs1 where else have you seen nbs1 watch very carefully nbs1 is here also that nbs1 is coming in and sitting in the local area instead of rad 52 i'll be using rad 3 and mre11 is common to homologous and non-homologous so let me write it here the most important proteins that will be present in both the conditions would be nbs1 rad3 mre11 these are the three important proteins that are required now these proteins can you watch the proteins in different angles you can see the shades here the purple shade speaks about dna enzyme the q70 is actually the yellow colored enzymes both of them are together and then the nbs1 along with rad3 will come inside when that happens you will have a polymerase. That polymerase will read this nucleic acid base pair. It will bring the corresponding base pair and keep it here. Then it will breed this particular base pair and bring it here. When that happens, you're not going to add anything extra. You just are going to bind this and this by a welding mechanism. For that, DNA ligase is needed. And this is called as non-homologous repair. Why is it non-homologous repair? Because this and this are not related to each other. Both of them are opposite each other. But by making them bind here and here, and here and here, you are able to make the two strands bind to each other. Did you understand this? This is a different strand. This is a different strand. But by making this strand bind, this nucleotide base binding with this, and this base binding with this, the ligase activity, I agree with this. Sir, so in non-homologous, the defect is on the different base levels on both strands. Yes. On both the strands, correct. So the DNA repair is done. Are you all okay with the information, people? You just have to know in your exams, you just have to know XRCC4, DNA ligase 4, MRE11, and your RAD2, RAD3, Q17, Q80. If you could say this, it'll be more than enough for you to get these full answers. Are you all getting some confidence after learning this? Or did I actually depress you? See, please understand, you don't have to know each and every line of what I told you. But if you know it, you will be able to answer your questions a thousand times better. And when somebody comes and asks you a doubt, you will be able to clear it. Because when you read statements like non-homologous recombination, homologous gen junction, if you keep on saying that but not knowing what exactly is happening, when somebody raises a question from there, you will not be able to understand the question. That is the only point. But other than that, if you write even three or four lines, you'll get full marks for your theory exam. Now, did I still, are you depressed? Because I told you this much. You will not answer this, huh? Okay. So, thank you. Now, let's go to the next slide. I'll show you different pictures for the same concept. Now, watch the pictures here. Look at the picture here. Now, you have to tell me what mechanism is this. Okay, I'll tell you. This is non-homologous end joining. This side is homologous recombination. Shimon, I'll do it in a different class that comes under a completely different topic called as regulation of gene expression. It comes in a different classroom called as regulation of gene expression, the lacoperon part. If I tell this, if I say that, it will take some half an hour of time to explain the previous part and then come there. I will not be able to tell you in two lines. In two lines, if I want to tell me, I can tell you one thing. When lactose is available, you have to try to generate an enzyme which can utilize lactose. If lactose is not available, that enzyme which utilizes lactose need not be produced. That is a simple logic. I can say that in one line also. But if you want to understand, we'll do it in gene regulation class. Okay, Shimon. Okay, now look at this part here. Keep following both these areas. Look at this. In these areas, Q70, Q80, DNA, PKCs are coming back and binding to the edges. But here, in case of non-homologous, that is in case of homologous enjoyment, we'll be having MRN, resection of nucleoprotein fragment has happening. Now you're trying to invade into the other double standard DNA. Remember, in case of homologous recombination, one double standard DNA will try to invade into the other double standard DNA and take one of the strands here to help create a complementary copy. Is it clear? Hello, people. Now they'll ask you, where will you come across a protein called as Artemis? Artemis is a protein which will hold one strand of the double standard break so that you will be having a marker activity. Artemis will bind. Artemis is a property of non-homologous end joining property. Artemis belongs to non-homologous end joining. Is that clear? 
and whenever they are going to be repaired remember whenever before repair all these proteins can come and clutter the area but once the repair is done all the proteins will be removed so rad 51 rpa everyone will go away what i'm left with is pure clean double standard dna's here and here this ligase 4 will also be removed so do you remember that ligase 4 is the ligase that we use in case of non-homologous enjoining are you following this part in non-homologous enjoining we'll have ligase 4 tell me in homologous recombination what is the last enzyme what polymerase did we see? Come on, people. What polymerase is excellent? Roshan and Hemant is correct. It is called as delta. If you could know these names, it is more than enough. Okay. Now look at the theory part once again. Just look at the part here for a minute. I am showing you multiple pictures so that you will not feel like it is completely new to you. Homologous template, sister chromatin. This is a sister. This is a sister. Sister has two phases. This sister has two phases. In that you're going to cut this area cut this area this cutting requires rad 51 and brca2 now this will invade here this will invade here now when the invasion has happened watch the color coding very clearly the color coding will tell you what exactly is the twist that has happened look at this i told you the twist right some of you may not be completely satisfied with the explanation given there i understand even if i was a student i would not be completely happy with the twisting part but then now the twisting card will become easily better look at this here it is blue you follow the blue here Follow the blue here, 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 follow the blue here. What are you left with? You are left with the cutting here. Now this end and this end will join. This end and this end will join. At that point of time, the blue is followed by red, green, red, blue. Either you take it as a twisting or you take it as a cutting and biting. Look at this. Here till here it was blue. From here the blue is lost. So this blue is making contact with the red. The red is making contact with the green. The green is again having contact with the red. It goes to blue. This is what is happening here. So what is the result here? Blue, red, green, blue. Now what is remaining here? Now watch very carefully the sister chromatin. In the sister chromatin, what did you have? You had red here. You had blue here. You had red here. So that is what is left. Are you following this part, people? Either you can take it as a twist or you can take it as a cut, break and paste. This is the cut, break and paste. So the cutting can happen here and here. This end can be joined. Let me erase this part. Let me use a different color. Let me zoom better. Cut here, cut here. Join this area, this area. Join this area, this area. Done. Now let's go to this area. Base excision repair requires the most important enzyme called as glycosylase. Glycosylase. Glycosylase will remove the sugar. When you remove a sugar, when you remove a sugar from the nitrogenous base attachment, what will be left? The nitrogenous base will be removed and knocked off. So when the nitrogenous base is removed, either a purine is knocked off or a primrin is knocked off. I repeat, look at this. In this double standard DNA here, many times people will not understand what is the meaning of a purinic area or a primrinic area. Have you come across the word called as AP site? Hello, yes or no? You would have come across apurinic, apurinic, yes or no? So what exactly is happening? If I say A is here, this is A, but to the A's other side, you have a ribose here. You will be having a phosphate here. You will be having an enzyme called as glycosylase, which will try to break the ribose bond. When this bond is broken, this adenine alone will be lost. When adenine is lost, the ribose is still hanging here with the phosphate. So what is missing here? The purine is missing. What can be missing here? Purin can be missing. So because purine alone is missing, you can call it as a purinic site or a primidinic site. Did you understand the meaning of the word AP site now? No? Yes or no? Okay, Hemant asked me to repeat. See, every time I write A, T, T, G, C, etc., I have a A, I have T. What exactly is here? Adenine is here, ribose is here, phosphate is forming the side railing. Now I bring a glycosylase enzyme. It will break the bond with the ribose from the adenine. When this bond is broken, adenine is becoming free. That adenine will start floating and get out because there is no site here. See, if I have A, T to be formed, but instead I have G, T being formed here. So now G should be removed. So what am I supposed to do? I will remove this G. How do I remove? I cut the bond between the ribose and the G. So the G becomes free.
when g becomes free what am i left hanging with only the ribose ribose is hanging here ribose is hanging without a purin or a pyrimidin this zone this ghost area is called as apurinic site or apurinic site did you understand this now himant himant yes i'll zoom into the picture for you now watch it now you have many reasons ionizing radiation dna sensing can happen glycosylase will come into picture that glycosylase will knock off the adenine now there are two mechanisms of base excision repair watch very carefully there is something called as short patch base excision repair long patch base excision repair what exactly happens you'll be using polymerase beta in case of short patch you'll use polymerase delta in case of long patch are you following this part where else did you hear polymerase delta come on people where else did you come across polymerase delta homologous recombination repair excellent so remember in homologous recombination oh lagging strand okay 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 and not in the dna replication i'm asking about the dna repair mechanisms okay so in the long patch ber you'll be using polymerase delta in short patch you'll be using polymerase beta what is the difference polymerase beta will be taking step by step of activity of addition of nucleotides remember polymerase has only one function what is that polymerization what is being polymerized every single atp ttp dtp utp ctp are all called as nucleotides that nucleotides are slowly arranged among each other one nucleotide the other nucleotide the other nucleotide the other nucleotide keeps on elongating right that is called as polymerization like polymer of amino acids is called as what polymer of amino acids is called as what one people a polymer of amino acids is called as x excellent polymer of amino acids is called as peptide likewise polymer of nucleotides is called as nucleic acid chain so in that polymerase beta knows to attach only one nucleotide at a time but the polymerase beta is capable i mean delta is capable of attacking a whole patch of activity now what happens next whenever you add only one ligation can be easier and faster but when you add many you require extra proteins to fill in the ligation so here you'll be having a different ligase here will be having a different ligase for one extra nucleotide you can use ligase 4 but for a patch of nucleotides i'll use ligase 1 do you understand the difference here people are you able to understand the difference here when a single nucleotide has to be added i can use polymerase beta and polymerase beta is doing what addition of only one nucleotide now there were already many nucleotides staying here these nucleotides belong to the original dna if i bring a fresh nucleotide both of them will not talk to each other to make them talk to each other i have to bring a phosphodiester bond that is brought by the ligase that ligase is ligase 4 but when a whole patch is brought here the patch activity can be brought by ligase 1 so this is called as base excision repair where the nucleotide base alone was removed not the ribose remember what is the difference base excision repair nucleotide excision repair what is the difference when i remove only adenine or guanine or cytosine or uracil or thymine it's called as base excision repair the ribose is still hanging the ribose is still hanging in the dna but when i remove the adenine plus the ribose plus the phosphate the whole area is empty are you following this part now there is no ribose this area has a gap you will be able to see a proper hole do you understand the difference a cavity can be seen if nucleotide excision repair is happening but cavity is not seen in base excision repair now look at the next structure here nucleotide excision repair in the nucleotide excision repair you will require a transcription protein factor called as tf2h complex now in transcription okay now let me tell you one thing this is the double stranded dna if i want to go for dna replication this also should be replicated this also should be replicated and both will happen separately or at the same time when i talked about dna replication i told you this there are two strands present here when the replication happens the replication of each strand will happen together or different different times at the same time or at different times excellent at the same time they have to happen it means at the same time they have to be separated so separation of dna strands is a must for a new dna to come and form here 
a new DNA for this strand, a new DNA for this strand. For both the DNAs to be having a new parent daughter strand, you need separation of the parent strands. That separation is done by which enzyme and DNA replication? That separation is done by which enzyme? Excellent. It is done by helicase enzyme. Now, that will be done by the same activity can be done for transcription also. What is transcription? If I want to read this particular DNA and create mRNA, if you want to read this DNA and produce an mRNA in both the areas, creation of an mRNA from the DNA is called as transcription. For that transcription to happen also, separation is needed. And that separation is done by the enzyme another than RNA polymerase. Here you don't need specific enzymes for separation. RNA polymerase will do many things. One of the things is separation of strands. And that area requires transcription factor proteins called as 2H, 2D, 3A, etc. These are all transcription factors which are nothing but proteins. Those proteins will come and bind at specific sites away from the site of initiation of transcription. Say for example, in a double standard DNA like this, if this is the point where transcription has to start. Remember, when you go at higher levels of understanding molecular biology, whenever somebody is drawing a double standard DNA here and then they pick a point and they put a mark with a up right corner. If at all they put an arrow mark like this, it means this is the point where transcription starting site is formed. This is the point called as plus one site from that transcription will start. But before the plus one site, the 10 to 15 or 35 base pairs, there'll be another site called as promoter area. In that promoter area, a promoter will come and sit. Now this is actually a recognition site. Such kind of recognition sites will be bound by the proteins called as TF2H. That same TF2H will be brought here in case of nucleotide excision repair. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you able to understand the alternative structure I told you? See, in replication, you need strand separation. In transcription also, you need strand separation. But here, in trans separation, helicase is enough because this is DNA replication activity. But that separation is completely kept because of TF2H complex. Now, this complex will happen in such a way. Now, I'll be able to bring in endonuclease. The endonuclease will cut those zones which are defective. There is a huge gap. In that gap, polymerase delta will come and sit. It will fill the gap, which will be done by ligase. This is called as nucleotide excision repair. In nucleotide excision repair, you will have a cavity like this. But in case of base excision repair, you will not have a cavity. You will have only one small space where the base is missing. Mark my words, in this area, there is no opening, there is no cavity, there is no cavity, only a base is missing. Did you understand the picture here, people? Yes, correct. Are you all comfortable with what you know? Some people might have come fresh now. Do not worry if you don't understand everything because it takes a lot of time to understand. We have been talking for the last one hour, 15 minutes. That's why they were able to understand. If you join now, please don't get depressed because I'm talking some difficult things. When you have time, go back and see the same thing. It'll be dead easy for you. Okay. Now let's go forward. I'll show you the picture. You can look at the theory part. Do you want to see this picture? See, seeing as many pictures as possible is good. If you want, I'll show you. Otherwise, I'll skip and go to transcription. Shall I do it or not? Please tell me faster. Respond, respond, respond. It's your time and my time. Okay. This is another way of showing non-homologous end joining. Non-homologous means how many strand, how many double standard DNA are involved? In non-homologous, how many double standard DNA are involved? Shreya. Non-homologous Shreya. Yes, excellent all of you. There is only one double standard DNA involved. Non-homologous. Why? Because they're dealing with the other strand. Okay. Now look at this. What are the proteins coming in binding? The blue colored protein is binding here. The purple colored ring is binding here. The red colored ring is binding here. XRCC5 or XRCCR4 and along with that of ligase, they'll be able to come and bind this area. So now look at this. Double strand break ends are tethered by MRN complex. What is MRN complex made up of? MRN complex is made up of MR11, RAD50, and NBS1 blue. XRCC5, XRCC6, and ligase. XRCCR4, XRCC4 and ligase 4 is recruited to DSBNs to stimulate DNA ligation. So ligation is the most important property. In this non-homologous end joining mediated DSB repair, 
pathway, some DNA sequences might be degraded at the DNA breakage site. I want you to understand the huge difference here. I repeat once again, in this NHEG mediated DSB repair, you will be destroying a part of the DNA. Watch very carefully. This part of DNA will be lost. When that is lost, a portion of DNA will be lost. So when you're trying to join, look at this. If this is error prone, if I erase this area and this area, then I fuse both of them. I have lost this and this important data. I saw no. See, this is the wire. In the wire, this area is affected. So what do I do? I take a cut here. I take a cut here. Then at the end of it, I fuse both of them. I have lost this much amount of data. Are you following this part? So in case of homologous joining, data loss is never seen. Why? Come on, come on, tell me. I'll see how many of you are really sharp enough to tell me the answer. In homologous also, you raise something. Watch, watch, watch this. I told you in homologous also, can you see this? In homologous also, this zone was erased, this zone was erased, but still I have no loss of data. Why not? Excellent Satyapriya, the sister chromosome will provide it. Why? Because when this is erased and this is going deeper, it's getting the complementary from the other strand so that they'll be able to generate the original missing data. Are you following this part? No, no, no. You are trying to copy from the template. Are you understanding all these things, people? Hello, are you all able to understand what I'm saying? In homologous enjoining or homologous, non-homologous, I mean, in homologous enjoining or homologous recombination repair, I said, even if you erase this area and this area, now this will go deeper, this will go deeper. They'll be able to face the opposite strand. From the opposite template strand, they'll be able to derive data and fill up the gaps or you follow this part. But here what happens, I cut it here, I cut it here, I welding. Like how two edges are welded, at the end of welding, will the edge looks very clean? Whenever you have some iron breaking down or metal breaking down, when you go for welding, will that joining area look clean? No, right? It'll be dirty. So likewise, you'll be having some loss. That loss can be seen in case of homologous. I'm sorry, the loss can be seen in case of non-homologous end joining. No loss in case of homologous recombination repair. That's the huge difference. Now we'll go for transcription if you're all okay. You can read the theory part when you have time. These pictures are to show you things to understand better. What are the proteins required for eukaryotic NER? When they ask you questions like this, listen, RAD14, RPA123, RAD23, RAD3, RAD2, RAD1, RAD10, all these things are seen. And in case of human proteins, XPA, XPC, XPB, XPD, ERCC1, all can have different functions. If you want, you can take this slide and just have a look at this when you want. Every single protein has its own function. Many functions, you don't have to know it threadbare unless you become a molecular biologist. You don't have to know all these proteins and names. Just remember, if I tell you the name of a protein, you should be able to say where it comes under. Quick question. Your DNA ligase 4, where does it come? DNA ligase 4, where does it come? We have discussed for 1 hour 20 minutes. Come on, people. DNA ligase 4, where does it come? Excellent. Very good. Okay, where else does the DNA ligase come? Ligase 4, where does it come? Excellent standard tuning in case of short patching of base excision repair. Okay, now we are going for transcription. For those people who have joined fresh now, do not worry. Transcription will be a completely new topic. You don't have to worry about anything. Are you following this part? So shall we start transcription? Before we start transcription, let me give you one minute time. Please relax. Tell me if there is anything you want me to repeat. Are you all getting benefit from the class? I know you're all sitting in the class because you think you're getting benefited. But are you getting benefited? You can be absolutely honest. You can be threadbare honest. If you're not getting benefited, do not worry about telling me this because if you know it already, then I don't have to worry about it. And if you are getting revision also, it is fine. At least you should get revised. That is what is my concern. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, all of you. Any questions, please? We have 35 minutes more. We'll do transcription as much as possible. Okay. So let me put simple words first. What exactly happens in transcription? Let me put simple words first. See, we have two strands of DNA. Name the first one as 5 prime to 3 prime. This one is 
3 prime to 5 prime. Whatever happens, the reading happens in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Likewise, the reading again happens in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Both of them are double stranded. That is, this is a double stranded DNA. Now, how can transcription happen? First, you have to separate some zone. Once you separate the zone, this double strand will slowly turn into this kind of transcription bubble. Like how you have something called as replication bubble and replication fork, you'll be having something called as transcription bubble. Tell me people, I said helicase acts in the DNA replication for separation of strands. What happens to help in the separation of strands and transcription people I told you? Excellent. RNA polymerase, no SIRAM. SIRAM I said transcription factor 2H is helpful in the separation. After separation it helps. But who initiates the separation? It is again RNA polymerase. Now let me tell you the meaning of certain enzymes which can be very confusing. When I say DNA polymerase, what do I mean? When I have an already existing DNA to the DNA nucleotides, I'm going to add one more nucleotide in multiple numbers. So that DNA strand is elongating. That is the function of DNA polymerase. Now you have something called as DNA dependent RNA polymerase. What will a DNA dependent RNA polymerase do? It will take the DNA, use the DNA as the template and produce a complementary RNA strand that complementary RNA strand can be either mRNA or tRNA or rRNA or siRNA or miRNA. Are you following this part? Hi, Gopal Henry. Thank you very much. Welcome, DP. Look at first one is DNA polymerase, where the DNA is getting elongated. It means the DNA polymerase helps in replication of DNA. DNA polymerase helps in the replication of DNA. What will the DNA dependent RNA polymerase do? When I say RNA polymerase, think twice because what exactly kind of polymerase is it? Is it DNA dependent RNA polymerase or is it RNA dependent RNA polymerase? If it is a DNA dependent RNA polymerase, using DNA as a template, a portion of the DNA can be taken from which mRNA can be generated. That will be referred to as transcription. But there is one more equivalent of this. When I have something called as RNA dependent RNA polymerase, you have an RNA template for example, plus SSRNA is here. With the help of this plus SSRNA, I'll be able to generate minus SSRNA. Now, again, with the help of minus SSRNA, I can produce 1 million copies of plus SSRNA. Here, it is RNA replication. It is RNA replication, not transcription. It is RNA replication. This will happen in case of RNA viruses undergoing replication inside the body. Did you understand this, people? RNA polymerase can be DNA dependent RNA polymerase or they can be RNA dependent RNA polymerase. If they are DNA dependent RNA polymerase, no Shreya, RNA dependent DNA polymerase is called as reverse transcription. I am just, I have not even gone there. I am speaking about DNA dependent RNA synthesis or RNA dependent RNA synthesis. When it is RNA dependent RNA synthesis, it can either be the replication of the whole RNA or taking a small portion of RNA's information called as transcription of the genomic RNA to produce small messenger RNA. Here the DNA is genomic DNA. From the genomic DNA, I am creating a small mRNA portion that is called as transcription. Here from the genomic RNA, if I produce a small mRNA, there is still transcription. But from the genomic RNA, if you produce a complementary genomic RNA, that is called as RNA replication. Did you all understand this? If somebody did not understand, please put an R if you didn't, if you didn't understand it. R means repeat. Okay, so we are done with this part. I have told you the meaning of certain kind of enzymes. Now let me tell you the gist of the whole RNA transcription. Let me zoom into this for you. Do not worry. Every picture is hyper based picture. So in the future, if you have these kind of questions or similar kind of pictures, you should not feel confused. Now we are starting with the whole concept here. Now what you're seeing here is a double stranded DNA. In the double stranded DNA, they're putting up two words called as P and T. P stands for the promoter region. In the promoter region, the yellow colored ball is coming and sitting here. 
that yellow colored ball is a promoter itself are you following this part promoter zone is present in the dna on which promoter will come and bind the promoter is the sphere here and this will be the t which is the terminal zone or the terminator region in the dna are you following this part so it means in that particular combination that is formed what are the components present in the combination we have a double stranded dna here and we have a promoter on one end terminator on the other end so whatever transcription happens it happens between this promoter region till the terminator region whatever region of double stranded dna before or after will not be taken into consideration are you okay with it please put a thumbs up every time i'm asking you because we'll go step by step we'll go faster okay we can finish many things faster have you understood till now so we are just fixing with the template binding and closed complex formation now the complex is ready what happens with the open complex formation this open complex formation is also called as pre initiation complex remember you'll come across pre initiation complex and initiation complex in translation many people do not know that pre initiation complex can happen in transcription also when can that happen when the promoter is here and when the enzyme is supposed to come and bind you will be having a space between the two strands notice very carefully here there was no space between the two strands but here if you notice there is a space between two strands are you able to appreciate this difference here come on people tell me faster we'll finish faster i'm going step by step if at any step you don't understand you can put an r you don't have to even say why please put a thumbs up there is enough so i'm saying this is the beginning here the open complex is forming now it requires some energy and atp atp and ntp will come inside now at this junction you will understand from the promoter zone a replica of a particular gene happens that is a small rna particle is starting now that rna particle will have some kind of essential nucleotides attached to them called as adenine and nucleoside phosphate you will be having triple phosphate with adenosine phosphate and nucleotide phosphate now this is not understood by many people as why it is present remember if i have look at this see whether you can understand what i'm saying here now mm, now look at this i'll show you a white paper now can you notice two wires here can you notice two wires here now in the two wires between the two wires for this top wire also i want a daughter copy from this top wire also i need a daughter copy it means i can't separate the dna completely dna will not be separated completely you just have to create a space like when they are together i just want only this space to enlarge when this space is enlarging this is a zone where a promoter is coming and sitting now i want to extract an rna between the ideas the dna this dna will remain the same this dna will remain the same both the dna will remain the same but from the dna when the gap between the two dnas i am trying to extract an rna out but how will i know this rna can be removed i need some kind of holding material yes or no hello this is also a strand this is also a strand in the combination of strands i am creating a new strand now this new strand should neither be attached to this or to this it is a template it is a complementary of this strand so i am supposed to extract this strand so what will i generally do whenever i am trying to knit any kind of clothes for example this cloth i am trying to knit i will at the end put a knot s yes or no if i want to identify singly every single strand in a tape in a ah oh yes look at this this is the towel in this towel there are many edges now what do i do i create a knot like this so that i'll be having multiple knots it looks like a jalsa and notice this part here are you able to understand what i'm saying in normal conditions the towel will end up like this flat but sometimes the thread will be focused outside now what do i do i create knots out of the thread like this likewise if i create a polyphosphated nucleic acid polyphosphated nucleic acid i'll be able to notice this structure look at this sorry look at this let me erase all the annotations now it look better to you yes now i'm attaching the triple phosphate adenosine phosphate and nucleic phosphate it can be anything here one nucleotide will make a pair with the other nucleotide this n means in the n it can be either a or u or c or 
G. Anything can come here. First one is adenine, that is for sure. So triple phosphate of adenine, that is adenosine, plus a phosphate, plus a nucleated phosphate. When this is attached here, now I'll be able to say this extending line is actually a new RNA. Watch this. I'll zoom into this. This is the maximum zoom that is possible here. Can you notice a new strand emerging right now? This is a strand. This is a strand. Can you notice this strand here? It is not an arrow mark. It is not a pointer. Please don't mistake this. This is not a pointer or an arrow mark. Can you notice a new RNA emerging here? Hello? Yes. So once this is ready, I'll incorporate more and more NTPs. Now when I incorporate more and more NTPs, now the chain is getting elongated. Can you notice this part here? What was seen as a single nucleotide is right now becoming a huge chain. At some point of time, when enough amount of chain has been formed, the chain terminates. Tell me, when will the chain terminate? When the chain comes towards and, and comes, comes facing what? The beginning happened with P. When the whole chain encounters what? Excellent. The whole chain encounters T site, it will stop. So when that is stopping, now what do I do here? This has encountered the T here. The promoter has come near. There is the DNA polymerase is the yellow colored piece. The yellow colored sphere right now you're seeing here is the DNA polymerase. It came and sat in the promoter site or just above the promoter site or the downstream of promoter site. In the promoter site, the promoter proteins came and sat. The yellow colored protein kept on moving. Ultimately, it came near the T. So the moment where the DNA polymerase comes face to face with the terminator site, now they have to detach. What the detachment showing you? Now you have three results of detachment. On one side, you will be able to leave the freshly prepared mRNA going out. The RNA polymerase becomes free. At the same time, the DNA will actually become original double standard DNA. Again, it going back to the original phase, waiting for the next step of transcription to happen. This is called as transcription cycle. Did you understand this, people? In this, the RNA polymerase enzyme of eukaryotes contain alpha, two alphas one beta fraction one beta dash fraction and then you have a sigma fraction this sigma fraction is not shown generally but it comes when the whole thing initiates are you following this part when the rna polymerase is supposed to initiate the polymerization the sigma factors enter inside once the sigma factor enters inside it is not seen very casually but remember rna polymerase is technically a simple polymerase can you repeat look at this you have something called as apo enzyme plus a prosthetic group. All enzymes are technically what? Proteins. Now, when I say apo protein is mixing with the prosthetic group, what is the result? Come on, people, tell me. When an apo protein is mixing with the prosthetic group, what is the result? Excellent, Shreya. It is called as holo protein. Likewise, we have apo enzyme plus prosthetic group. Give me what? It gives me a holo enzyme. So the apo enzyme part contains two alpha subunits, one beta subunit, one beta dash subunit, to which if I'm able to add a sigma, along with the sigma, you will be able to have a particular holo enzyme. Gaurav Jangit, you are not doctor. No problem, Gaurav Jangit. If you're able to sit in this class, if you're able to understand, I'm really grateful to you. Thank you so much for listening to the class. Okay, welcome. Okay, now we have holo enzyme here. So apo enzyme plus the sigma prosthetic group alone is referred to as holo enzyme. This is what, yes, this is what is happening here. Now you have the sigma factor coming inside. Now let me show you some pictures for the whole structure. Okay, look at this. This is the mammalian eukaryotic nuclear DNA dependent RNA polymerase. We have the alpha subunits, beta, beta prime subunit. We have the sigma 70 subunit. Many people make mistakes of saying that this will be read as rho. Please understand this symbol is not rho. This symbol is rho. This symbol is rho. Now, why rho is important? Because in the DNA area, when I start promoting, as the DNA polymerase moves forward, it comes to a site called as terminator site. Now, this terminal site, terminator site can be of two types. I repeat, terminator site can be of two types. One is the site has a solid structure that blocks the DNA polymerase enzyme. That solid structure is the row factor. When a row factor is standing, a protein is coming and standing here, this protein will mechanically block. 
mechanically block the further movement of polymerase or the last zone of dna will be giving me the rna now the rna will have certain repeat zones those repeat zones will be in such a way that they can form hair look bed let me show you a picture of that don't worry just be with me now look at this picture here this is also half a base picture look at the direction of transcription it is 5 prime to 3 prime n and 3 prime to 5 prime n now there are many students who will get confused at this level itself so what is coding strand what is template strand why is coding strand not acting as a template can template strand act as a coding strand can coding strand act as a template all these questions will come into the picture just remember there are two strands if i name this strand as coding strand then automatically this is called as template strand if i name this as coding strand then this becomes template strand let me fix my mind i'm just fixing for the moment for the time being i call this as the coding strand then the complementary of coding strand is always called as template strand why is it called as template strand because it is going to act as a template which will be the equivalent of the rna now watch very carefully in this area you have the rr the mrna being generated why mrna is generated here watch very carefully let me use a different particular slide here we have two strands now this strand for example 5 prime to 3 prime 3 prime to 5 prime what do i want in a cellular cytoplasm for glycolysis what is the first enzyme come on people in cellular cytoplasm for glycolysis to begin what is the most important enzyme to begin hexokinase say for example in the 5 prime to 3 prime end in the beginning that is in the 100th base pair from the 5 prime area is the gene for hexokinase now if i search for the gene here will it be hexokinase here this is 5 prime to 3 prime this is 3 prime to 5 prime in the 5 prime to 3 prime area from the beginning to the 100th site itself i have a hexokinase gene now if i keep on doing the same thing from here can i see the hexokinase gene here no so i have to go from here backwards from here the 100th zone can be hexokinase are you following this part do you understand this so when the rna polymerase comes here it can either read this strand or this strand only the strand whose genomic information has been transcribed will become the codon or the coding strand are you following this part but i understand this is the information i want to code but the rna polymerase will go and bind to this zone because against this template only i'll be able to generate the dna do you get my point rna it will take time for you to understand do not worry this is 5 prime to 3 prime this is 3 prime to 5 prime this zone is for hexokinase likewise this zone is for hexokinase my question is to activate this zone to promote the enzyme and produce the enzyme called as hexokinase now the rna polymerase will come and sit here when it comes and sits here it went through a lot of activities and came and sat here now in this space it will be able to reach out to this site and it will try to promote an alternative protein or a nucleic acid which is corresponding to this one are you following this part now this mrna used which one as a template one or two hello tell me so even though there is a small separation did i use one or two as a template i used two as a template i created mrna so that means the hexokinase understanding of the polymerase happened from the strand one the hexokinase area was understood and recognized by the rna polymerase which was present on the strand one but i used the strand two to start the transcription so this is called as the coding strand because it contains the codon for hexokinase but this is the template strand because it is going to give you an act as a template for generating the mrna now that mrna will come out when enough amount of mrna is synthesized are you all able to understand what is happening is it becoming more difficult for you people is it becoming difficult sairam is it difficult <clears throat> Are you even listening?
Yes, the strands can change depending upon necessity. Correct. Which part do you want me to explain to Diksha? Awesome. Thank you. Again, I'll repeat this part alone. Let me use different colors. Hexokinase is coded here. Likewise, the hexokinase is coded here. I'm not saying hexokinase should be coded only here. I'm saying if this hexokinase is coded here, that hexokinase can be coded here also. It does not mean this is the only site of hexokinase coding. It can be coded here, it can be here, it can be here, it can be here also. Are you following this part? Now, when I open up the zone here, the RNA polymerase will be running through the 5' prime to 3' prime strand only. It does not run in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction. It runs in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. You take any strand. So as it runs on this area, it encounters the codon. Once it encounters the codon, it will take up the opposite strands gene to go for transcription so that I can produce a complementary copy for this particular strand. This is realizing the codon present on the strand one, but it is actually bind to the codon that is present on the strand two. So this will be taken as a template against which the mRNA is synthesized. Now that mRNA will come out. Now, if you watch very carefully, this mRNA is the complementary of strand two, but this is the same as strand one. Why is it called as codon? Because the hexokinase gene was present in this codon, which was recognized by the RNA polymerase. The polymerase will utilize multiple hexokinase areas present on the strand two, so that they will be using this as the template. So strand two is called as template, strand one is called as codon, coding strand. Now the template strands opposite will be mRNA, while the coding strand will be the same as the mRNA strand. The difference is in the coding strand, I'll be having T. In the mRNA strand, I'll be having U instead of T. Did you understand this, Sudhiksha? Okay, now let me show you other pictures for your benefit. Now look at this picture here. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this picture here. We are able to see alpha, alpha, beta, beta dash, the sigma. All together are coming here. Now, is it holo enzyme or apo enzyme? Alpha, alpha, beta, beta dash, and sigma. Is it holo enzyme or apo enzyme? It is holo enzyme. Who made it holo? Holo means wholesome in Latin. Come on, who made it holo? Sigma factor made it whole. Excellent. Now let's look at the other part here. Now watch this. Then you have two strands here. You will be able to generate a strand and that strand will always elongate in the three prime direction. So when I created the first strand, you had a polyphosphorylated, which, which base I told you, polyphosphorylated, which base I told you, I wanted the twins excellent adenine to which a phosphorylated any nucleotide can be added when that is added it is like creating a knot on the area to separate them separately so now the rna is ready you can see the double stranded dna is written in black but the fresh rna is shown in red are you able to see the difference here let me zoom in for you now this whole complex is called as rnap complex rna polymerase complex RNA polymerase is here, double standard DNA is here, the transcript is actually getting ready and the transcriptome will become ready. So transcription is happening in this direction. Now let me show you other pictures to make it better for you. Ah, I was speaking about termination, right? I'm so sorry, I got deviated. Now look at this. Here, this is coding strand. This is template strand. In the coding strand, look at the sequence sequences, A, G, C, 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 G, C, C, whose opposite is T, C, G, G, C, C. Again, I can look at some repeats. Again, you'll be having some kind of complementary strands. But ultimately, you'll be having multiple Ts and you'll be having multiple As. Now watch it. If the coding strand is having multiple Ts, you will be using, now the mRNA will be the opposite of what, the complementary of what, strand one or strand two. The mRNA that is going to come out will be the complementary of one or two. It'll be the complementary of two. So in the template strand, I told you, right, when 5 dash and 3 dash, one strand one and strand two are actually binding with each other, double stranded DNA, this strand one is having poly T, strand two is having poly A. Now this poly A will be the one who can be transcribed. I'll get poly U. Now, if you look at the RNA primer that has been generated, now I have mRNA coming out. The five prime end is here. You will be elongating in the three prime direction. As it goes to the three prime direction, you will come across the state. Watch very carefully the beauty here. 
now look at the beautiful part here watch 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 be 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 more, be more attentive at this point of time can you notice g c g c I mean g c g g c t along with that you have c g c c c g a this was exactly before the poly t and poly a so if this was the poly a you can notice these things having a complementary strand here what was it let me write it here we have in the reverse direction we have a g c c c g c against which i'll be having u c g g g c g this is what is seen here can you notice this part hello my eyes are going darker i'm not able to see anything because i'm hypoglycemic right now but still the enthusiasm of thinking that you will be understanding it better is making me feel better are you understanding this or not the only happiness that is pushing me forward at the end of the session see in the next 10 minutes i'll be having one more class that will be for fmg students for microbiology mcqs if are there any fmg students here are there any fmg students here please put a y if you're here fmg aspirants or neat aspirants are you there anybody if there is any neat aspirant or a pg aspirant please put a y fmg aspirant if you are here okay so listen very carefully the double stranded dna will always be engineered in such a way there will be multiple repeat subunits what is the importance of this box here this box tells you such a kind of box sequence is conserved across species take it as a human being take it as a yeast take it as a bacteria in all those areas you can have such a kind of sequences now you notice the template strand is having this sequence called as c g c c c g a if you read it backwards it will be a g c c g g c g against which u c g g g c g is generated if you move forward here also you'll be having an mrna that mrna will become the complementary of this itself so that a bond is being formed intra chain bond is formed do you understand this part hello the rna transcriptome is supposed to be free but if this zone and this zone are complementary to each other now they are getting a folding among each other now this hairpin bending will happen in such a way rna polymerase will not be able to move any further because of which they come to a stop this is called as non row dependent termination what is row dependent in that area the row protein comes and sits rna polymerase cannot move forward in the absence of row protein also if at all the hairpin structure is being formed there also the blockage will happen now did you understand this people yes now we have eight more minutes i'll do some theory before that i will be open for all questions do you have any questions people please ask me if you want me to repeat something also let me know if you want to ask me something also let me know please tell me remember for both transcription and translation you have three major steps one is initiation the next is elongation the third one is termination we had discussed about termination which is row dependent and non row dependent i also told you about elongation the beginning is started by rna polymerase enzyme for that you require promoter genes etc that is what i'm going to discuss in the next 5 minutes we'll be finishing it now but before that if you have any questions please ask me come on people any questions at all any questions at all hairpin bend what about the hairpin bend pavitra devi what do you want me to you know What do you want me to know, Pavitra Devi? Moment, repeat. Okay, let's do it. Look at this. This is DNA one. This is DNA two. In that DNA two, you'll be having X Y Z, X Y Z, X Y Z. This is very commonly found in this zone of the DNA. Now, when the mRNA has been synthesized, that is, from here the mRNA has been synthesized. From here to here, the DNA has been used. This DNA has been used as a template, so the mRNA is ready. now as it is trying to replicate this area also here i'll be able to have some kind of x dash y dash x dash y dash x dash zone here as a complementary of this area now when they are trying to come out as they come out here this x dash y dash x dash y dash is looking like they are complementary to internally some other area which is y dash x dash y dash x dash here when that happens this rna strand which is elongated it will have intra chain similarities and complementarities so this will come and bind here so that the area will be having 
intra chain binding like this. I'm so sorry. Take a look at this. If this zone and this zone are complementary to each other, then it will fall like this area is coming together. This will be forming a bond. For example, if I have a C, G, A, C, G here, this will be having, for example, for this C, you'll be having what? C. For this C, you'll be having G. For this A, you'll be having U. For this G, you'll be having C. For this C, you'll be having G. Now, when this is rotating like this, you'll be having C, G, A, C, G. From this side, you'll be having C, G, U, C, G. Both will start binding. Now, this RNA is like, the RNA is supposed to be like this. Now it has become a hairpin bin structure because these two areas are complementary to each other. Now this becomes a block for the RNA polymerase to move. They'll come and stop. Okay. Now let's go for the last session. Now look at this. What is the base transcription complex? When they ask you, what is a BTC in your viva? Remember, there's this basal transcription complex. Can you see? Tell me what is this? I have told you just now. Whenever I put an arrow mark like this and put a right side direction, what does it tell you? Universal marker diagram. Excellent. This is start site. So this is called as transcription start site. Between the transcription start site, whatever is before it, it is called as upstream. Whatever is after it is called as downstream. Downstream will be numbered as first numbers and upstream will be minus numbers. At the upstream area of minus 30 and the downstream area of minus 30 is the maximum zone where the whole transcription complex can be fixed. Are you following this part? If I try to go for the transcription complex, what is the transcription complex made up of? The double stranded DNA, the transcription factor proteins, the transcription factor binding proteins called as TBP. Never, whenever you read about transcription factor binding proteins, look at this. If this is the DNA, in that DNA, this is the site for transcription. Very well ahead of the transcription, like minus 10 base pairs, we'll be having a box called as Tata box. This is Tata box for prokaryotes and Tata box in case of eukaryotes. Now, ahead of this, another minus 35 base pairs ahead, you'll be having one more zone. Why is the zone important? Look at this. If this is the pen, I am trying to feel the pen like this. I'm trying to feel the pen like this. What will I notice? I close my eyes and I try to notice. There are some sharp edges, which will be rough enough, which will block me from going faster. Likewise, when the RNA polymerase is running so swiftly, it is going so swiftly on the DNA, then there should be some sites which can tell you like a speed breaker. For example, if this is a Polish check post, now there is a speed breaker here. Now, if at all, I'm running at breakneck speed, if I apply my brakes exactly here, will I be able to stop here or stop further? If I apply my brakes here, I'll be able to stop only here. So if I want to stop here, then the information to stop should start here. Are you getting my point here? Instead of police, let me say a railway station. If this is the railway station, this is the platform. The train is coming here. Red signal will be placed here itself as a signal. Now, when the train is coming so fast, when I apply brakes only when I reach here, the train will stop somewhere here. If I want the stop to happen here, it should be given intimation here itself. That intimation is given because of this zone and this zone. When the RNA polymerase is running so fast, it meets this repeat area. It understands it has to stop and slow down. Again, it comes here. It slows down. The moment it comes here and binds, that area will be called as promoter area. In the promoter area, you'll always be having some mass substances stopping the transcription from happening. Look at this. If this is the promoter zone, if this is the promoter zone, in that zone, if X as a compound is coming and sitting, they both will form a mass over which the polymerase will not be able to travel. So either I remove the mass so that promoter site can be empty. This mass will be called as repressor. It will be called as repressor. Now, when the X is removed, that is called as derepression. Sometimes the opposite can be noticed. This end is empty, but because it is empty, promoter is not having any motivation to go across it. So that I bring a compound called as Y. When the Y compound comes and sits on the promoter, then the polymerase will be very happy to move across. Now, this is called as induction. Did you understand this, people? Really? Really, did you understand this? 
transcription is the step of mrna synthesis when mrna synthesis happens proteins will be synthesized so for everything to happen you have to understand whether the transcription start site is getting activated the start site is it starting at this point of time yes or no is my question so when the rna polymerase is running at breakneck speed first there is a speed bump then there is a speed bump then it will come back and start so once it starts this is the initiating area it keeps on running now when it is running it is called as elongation when it meets a rho protein or it meets either i meet a rho protein or else what do i meet either i meet a rho protein or the rna polymerase meets something else what is that hairpin bit so termination happens now let us not discuss in deep about the termination areas i'll tell you just few things about only look at this now these are the some of the mammalian rna polymerase 2 transcription control elements their consensus sequence and the factors that bind to them if i say tata box what is the consensus sequence tata in case of eukaryotes the factor which comes and binds to that area would be tata box binding protein a protein comes and binds to the tata box that is called as tata box binding protein or tbp likewise dpe cart box gc box ap1 hcr protein all of these areas are elements present on the dna whenever they say elements please understand elements are found in the dna the proteins who are binding to the element will be called as the dna binding proteins are you following this part do tss and promoter are all the same no 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 sudarshan see this is called as tss that is the transcription start site it is the initiator site but before that you will be having recognition sequences so when the promoter site is here when a particular protein comes and sits in this area it is promoted or induced if a particular protein is removed that is the repressor protein is removed it is called as derepression this is the signal where the whole thing can start so once the signal is over now the transcription starts from this point so initiation site and promoter site are different is that okay sudarshan okay now look at this i'll tell you about uh, post transcription modification if you like it it's past 2 hours will you be okay if i tell you for 2 minutes please tell me faster post transcription modification yes now when the rna came outside it is called as heteronuclear rna it can be converted into anything so that heteronuclear rna was synthesized inside the nucleus it will come back and find the nuclear pore through the nuclear pore it try to exit into the cytoplasm the moment it comes into cytoplasm it knows in the cytoplasm there are many exonuclease enzymes what will exonuclease do if this is an rna 5 prime 3 prime end the exonuclease will attach at the end sites either it cuts it here or it cuts it here when it starts cutting it from this direction or this direction they can be digestion of the freshly formed rna you do not want that to happen so you want to protect the rna so the rna which came outside the nucleus will be having a 5 prime end on the 5 prime end you have 7 methyl guanosine capping what is the meaning of it you pick up a guanosine residue you may be a a u a a a c g c a a u anything but if this is the last point i will attach a guanosine here that is not a simple guanosine it will be a methylated guanosine where is the methylation happening when i try to draw the guanine structure in the seventh position this area you have a methyl group added that is called as seven methyl guanosine why am i telling you this very specifically please remember 5 prime methylation is it correct or not 5 prime end methylation is one of the types of post transcription modification yes or no come on people if yes please put a thumbs up absolutely wrong please understand it is not in the 5 prime end i am not performing methylation i am performing guanosylation i am adding guanosyl group that guanosyl group is having a methyl group so methyl guanosylation is happening not methylation do you understand this part this is the mistake done by many pg chandigarh students who came for the exam when they came back and cried to me i was not able to say what exactly so do not make the mistake here methylation did not happen on the 5 prime end methylation happened in the guanosine the guanosine came and bound to the 5 prime end on the 3 prime end you keep on adding a lot of adenosyl tailing when you add a lot of adenyl tailing if exonuclease comes and attacks it will take a lot of time to keep on eating away a lot of adenosyl by the time it reaches this area it would be ready for translation or you follow this part so you are trying to cover up both the 5 prime and 3 prime ending cap is kept this is the head end 5 prime is always called as head 
and three prime is called as tail so in the head area cap is placed in the tail area polyelinal crest is placed these are the two important post transcription modification next what happens if at all i look at the five prime and three prime end there will be multiple zones which are interfering areas these interfering areas are called as interfering codons also referred to as introns these introns will not be carrying any information about protein so i do not want these things to be present so what do i do i want an eraser to cut this edge i want to cut this edge this edge this edge and this edge so that i'll be able to nick off all the other areas and i keep on binding end to end look at this this area is cut this area is cut this area is cut this area is cut now let me explain that picture alone and finish the class listen very carefully this is called as lariat formation of post transcriptional modification let us zoom inside watch it now this is exon 1 this is exon 2 imagine this is the whole zone here is the 5 prime cap this is the 3 prime polyelinating now between the exon 1 and exon 2 i have an intron this intron is what i do not want so what happens this intron the exons 3 prime end is this this exons 5 prime end is this do you understand if i write it from 5 prime to 3 prime end this is the 3 prime end of this exon this is the 5 prime end of this exon is that clear now keeping that in mind look at the concept here now you will choose a g area from this side and you will choose a area from the exon 2 now exon 1 will have the g exon 2 will have the a now always remember the first exon will act as the donor and the second exon will act as a recipient of the whole binding now you will be able to make a bond between now i'll try to keep a nick i make a nick here when the nick is made here this g will go and bind to the a the long with the whole intron this intron's g will twist and go and bind to the a now when this twist is happening the small loop is called as lariat if it is like this it will called as omega loop but it is not like that how is the loop look at this if it looks like this i would have called it as omega loop but here it will be one end with a loop coming like this so i call it as lariat it is not a proper omega loop it's just a lariat now when the lariat is formed here what is the next step i'll erase all the notations look at this now this g is going and binding with the a the lariat is formed here now i just have to create an exonuclease activity and break this area cut at the 3 dash end of intron now the g along with the a this bond is between that of the 5 prime end and the 2 prime end mark my words very carefully this is 5 prime this is 2 prime area so that this is not 3 prime area now between this g and this g if i am making a ligase activity come inside this is called as removal of introns and ligating of exons so that the whole area will be protein coding machinery so that they can be converted into proteins in the translation process did you understand this people so we have spent 2 hours 10 minutes continuously for all the people who are being very patient and listening to the class thank you very much so tomorrow yesterday i told you about mcq session right if you are first year students will you come for a session tomorrow for 30 mcqs if i keep it only for first year students and fmg aspirants would you like it please say yes if you want otherwise i'll look for it <laughs> it's absolutely your property okay so what time shall we keep it shall we keep it between 6:30 to 7:30 or 6:15 to 7:15 is okay for you the same time is okay for you okay so we'll have 30 to okay we'll have 40 mcqs mixed bag mcqs in whole biochemistry see whether you will be able to answer the questions in biochemistry to prepare for your university exam okay 6:15 to 7:15 we'll have a class tomorrow okay thank you people have a great evening for those people who are preparing for entrance exams please join me at 8:45 and all the people who have been very patient and listening to me amazing you all are you have been showing so much of patience you all sat together with me thank you so much i hope you understood something better than what you knew and if you have any difficulties please post your questions on the telegram group if you have any queries join me telegram group and ask me questions okay thank you so much good night please put a thumbs up if you can and uh, for those people who gave me hats yesterday thank you so much your hats mean a lot every hat you dedicate you get xp points which can be converted into discount points okay good night <laughs>